In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. So good morning, everybody. So you're very welcome this morning to Mass at the Capelina. And my name is Father James Boyle, and I'm with a group from Ireland. And joining me this morning is Father John Downey from Derry and Father Stefan from Germany. And to the members of our group, we, Father John's brother died last night, his brother Lawrence. So we will remember Father John's brother Lawrence and we pass on our condolences to Father John and his two sisters who are with us, with us also on this group. This Mass I'm saying is my group. The intentions are for the intentions of my group and, of course, for the intentions of everybody else here today. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass this morning, let us call to mind our sins. I confess in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We, you, we bless you, we adore you. God, only King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, our sins. Away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You will honor the Holy One, you will honor the Lord, you will honor the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> Sean, give me a booklet. Hand me that booklet. Thank you. Father, you have given us the mother of your son to be our mother also, grant us that by obeying the appeals of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may always work through prayer and penance for the kingdom of Christ and etern attain eternal happiness. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. John saw a new heaven and a new earth. First heaven and the first earth had disappeared now, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city and the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, as beautiful as a bride all dressed for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice call from the throne. You see this city, 
Here God lives among men. He will make his home among them, and shall be, and, and shall, they shall be his people. He will be their God. His name is God be with them. He will wipe away all the tears from the eyes, and there will be no more death, no more mourning, no more sadness. The world of the past has gone. Then the one sitting on the throne spoke. Now I am making the whole, whole creation new. This is the word of the Lord. My soul is filled with joy as I sing to God my Savior. You have looked upon your servant. You have visited your people and holy is your name. Through all generations, everlasting is your mercy to the people you have chosen and holy is your name. I am lowly as a child, but I know from this day forward that my name will be remembered, for all will call me blessed, and holy is your name. Through all generations, everlasting is your mercy to the people you have chosen, and holy is your name. In your love you now fulfill what you promised to your people. I will praise you, Lord, my Savior. Everlasting is your mercy, and holy is your name. Through all generations, everlasting is your mercy to the people you have chosen. And holy is your name. Alleluia, oh, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Virgin Mary, who believed the promise made you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister Mary, who was the wife of Cleopas and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw the mother and the disciple whom he loved, he said to the mother, Woman, this is your son. Then he said to the disciple, There is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple took her for his, to his own home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
you will remember the first creation. And remember, we had those two characters, Adam and Eve. And they, Adam and Eve, are the two people who are associated with humanity's fall. Now, you see, we have the moment of the restoration. That is to say, we have a second creation. Remember that first creation? Eve, that woman, Eve, was with Adam. Now at the restoration, that is, in the new creation, second creation, another woman is present. And that woman is present with the Son of Man, the human one, and Jesus is the second Adam. So we had Adam and Eve at the first creation, at the fall. We have got Mary, the mother, and her son. They are the two people present at the new creation. And we must remember that Mary now, she is neither a spouse, she is neither a husband, a spouse. Remember, Joseph is dead. And she hasn't got, you see, any more children left because her son is on that cross and he's going to die. So she has, she's going to be left alone, you see. And, you know, we must remember, you see, that a woman in Jewish culture, a woman who has no husband, you see, and remains alone, she would be considered cursed in the mind of the Jewish people. So what happens is Jesus entrusts Mary, his mother, the mother, to John. The other way around, he also entrusts John to Mary. Now, John, you see, who is writing this gospel, he testifies to having heard these words. He was there at the foot of the cross. He heard these words. And now, and a very important thing that you must remember, if you were listening to this reading properly this morning, there's one little word that is very, very important. Now, that is, if you have got a proper translation of the scripture. What, what is being said here is, you must notice that Jesus, you see, Jesus said to the mother, to the mother, not to his mother, but to the mother. And that is the proper translation, not his mother, but to the mother, you see, you see. And this is a new and a symbolic gesture of Jesus, you see. Mary will be the mother of all believers. That's important. You that little message away with this morning, that Mary is going to be the mother of all believers. So he entrusted the mother to John, not his mother, the mother, the mother of all believers, you see. And you see, now, you must remember, John, or surely Jesus, has given away everything he owned. And on the cross, Mary and John were the two last treasures he had got. And we see, or we hear, what he did with his two last treasures. He gave them to one another, you see. And through this last 
deed of Jesus from the cross, this last deed of entrusting Mary, the mother, to John, and John to Mary. You see, through this last deed, you see, the church has discovered something, the mystery, you see, something of the mystery of the Christian life. Church has discovered something new. The believer, you see, is somebody who is a member of a spiritual family. The believer is, you see, you see, and as a child, you see, in the physical world, as a child in the physical world, you see, needs a father and a mother to grow normally and to grow well, to grow normally, needs a physical father and a physical mother, you see. So too, you see, does the believer need, you see, a Mary and the Heavenly Father. It's important. In the spiritual life, we have got two realms. We have got the physical life. In the physical life, a child needs, or children need parents. They need a father. They need a mother to help them grow well, to help them grow normally. And so, so too, you see, in the spiritual world, in the realm of the spiritual, the believer need, believers need Mary and they need the Heavenly Father. You know, and this has been down the centuries, right from the beginning, this has been the unchanging doctrine of the church. You see, and this in no way we must remember to, you see, does not attempt to make the creature, Mary, it doesn't attempt to make Mary the creature equal to the creator. You must be careful of that too. But Mary, you see, played a very big part in our redemption. That yes of her, that angel Gabriel, yes, let it be done according to me, according to your word. You see, and it's not without reason, you see, that God gives us a mother, you see, because see, it's a misfortune for a child not to have known a mother. It is also a misfortune for a believer, for a follower of Jesus Christ, you see, when, you see, his religion or a person's religion or religion is only expressed in the masculine. The church doesn't express, you see, the, or the believer or religion doesn't only express, you see, our itself. The church doesn't express itself only in the masculine. The mother, the woman is there too, you see. And the woman, you see, or the person, the person, the believer, who welcomes Mary into his or her home, as did John, is neither a fanatic, you see, nor a quibbler regarding faith. Important that we remember that. We have all to remember that, that Mary is a big part of our redemption. She's known as a co-redemptrix. She played a big part with God, and becoming the mother of God's son on earth. She is a co-redemptrix. But that does not mean, you see, that we're not making the, cre the creature equal to the creator. Must, must keep that in mind too, you see. So we, there exists, you see, a form of humility, joy, interior peace, you see. for those people who really think and reflect about this, you see. And you see, for all those Christians, all those believers, you and me, or everybody who's here today, you see, we must be careful that we open the door, 
you see, that we open the door to Mary without throwing out their saviour. See, we can get it we can get an imbalance into the whole thing. So we have got to be careful. We have got Mary it played a part in redemption. Big part. But we're not making Mary equal to the Creator. But you know in well, we have got to put a proper balance. You see, you've got male, you've got female. We have got to have a proper balance in our lives. Mary is the mother. And when you read that again, you'll hear it sometimes in church. It's the wrong translation, which has been read out. It says his mother. It's the mother. Mary is the mother of all believers. For a few moments, just let us reflect. Then we'll have the prayer of the faithful. Here, at this sacred spot, where the Most Holy Virgin Mary appeared, let us present our prayers to God our Father, who gave us the mother of his Son to be our mother. For all the faithful that by obeying the appeals of Mary in spirit, of true penance and prayer, they may work wholeheartedly for the renewal of the world and for the kingdom of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our for those who exercise sacred ministry in the church, that they may be attentive to the word of God, love it and proclaim it with fidelity and, and enthusiasm, as Mary did, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our For those who govern nations, that they may work for justice and peace in the world and harmoniously collaborate in the just distribution of earthly goods among all the inhabitants of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who suffer, that in union with Mary, consoler of the afflicted, in the loving care of others and in the contemplation of the cross of Christ, they may find courage to face life. We pray to the Lord. For all of us here present, and for our families, our nations, for our cities, that by the intercession of Mary, those who seek Christ may find him, sinners may be converted, young people may open their hearts with enthusiasm to the gospel. We praise the Lord. Lord. And we offer up all the petitions that are going to be brought up now in the offertory procession. And we're going to put these on the altar and they're going to be put in underneath the statue after Mass, at the end of Mass. They'll be on the altar during Mass. So maybe now we bring up the petitions.
And we remember too this morning all those who are struggling with any kind of sickness, with addictions, with disorders, with compulsions and obsessions in their lives, and those who struggle with memories that need healing. Lord, hear us. And remember the names of all those people whose names are in our mobile phones and whose names are in our address books, people who may now be living or dead. But we pray to the Lord for them too this morning. We offer them to the Lord. Lord, hear us. We pray for the intentions of everyone here this morning. Lord, hear us. We pray for Father John Downey and his sisters this morning. They are bereaved at the death of her brother Lawrence. We ask the Lord to give them the grace at this time to be able to accept the great loss in the family. We also pray for <coughs> Lawrence's wife and his two daughters back in Derry. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Let us pray now for a moment in silence with any private intentions any of us may have got. God of infinite goodness, attentive to the supplication of your people and with the prayers of Mary, mother of your son and mother of the church, help us listen to our pleas and increase our faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yes, we'll put them in after. Leave them here now. Leave them with me. Leave them. Yes, leave, we'll leave them on the altar. Yes. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given human hands have made to become for us the bread of life. Blessed, By the mist blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit to the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away our iniquities, cleanse us from our sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, we offer you these gifts of reparation and of praise so that in celebrating the feast of the Blessed, or celebrating this memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary, you may absolve us from our sins and guide our wavering hearts. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks as we celebrate this memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary and praise you for your gifts. She, receiving your word in her immaculate heart, Meditate to conceive him in her virginal womb, and giving birth to the creator of the world, she prepared the birth of the church. She is she in receiving at the foot of the cross the testament of divine charity, received all people as her children, born to eternal life through the death of Christ. She, when the apostles were awaiting the coming of the Holy Spirit, the promised one, united her supplications to the prayers of the disciples and thus became the model of the suppliant church. She then finally elevated to the glory of heaven, surrounds with her maternal love 
the Pilgrim Church and lovingly direct their steps to the heavenly dwelling place until the glorious coming of the Lord. And so with the angels and the saints, we proclaim your glory as without end we acclaim. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. No, it's not too old. Eucharistic prayer to him. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of your death and resurrection, we offer you this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your pres stand in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, our Bishop of this diocese, and all the clergy and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. So here let us remember all our deceased relatives and friends and today we will remember in this Mass, Lawrence Downey too. Welcome all the deceased into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, O oh Lord. Make us all worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Jacintha and St. Francisco, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, come, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all distress, as we await in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And for a moment today at this time, let us be silent. In our hearts today, let us offer peace to anyone living or dead that any of us may not be at peace with at this time. Now that is off one another here, a sign of peace. Stefan, John, peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching. Never let us be parted from you. Stephen. John. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, we grant you under my roof, and the word of my soul shall be healed.
Now we will put the petitions that you have brought up, we'll put them into the, underneath the statue of Our Lady and you will sing. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, having received with joy these heavenly sacraments, grant us, we pray, that they may lead us to eternal life, for we may rejoice forever with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son and the mother <coughs> of the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With may Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Go in peace to glorify the Lord with your lives. So now, if you have any religious objects for blessing, you can hold them up at the moment. Anybody? 
So may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on all these religious objects. May they become sacramentals and channels of grace and power from on high to all those who will, who will use them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. There were people of all ages gathered around the gable wall Were an humble men and women, little children that you call We are gathered here before you and our hearts are just as the same Joy at such a vision as we pray.